I have recently tried several photo editing programs to find the best suited one for drone photography. I was very impressed by Skylum Luminar Neo, so I decided to spend a few days testing it and I liked it so much that I decided to adopt it as my main program to edit and organize my library of photos. This video is an overview where I will show the massive amount of editing capabilities of this program, including the very advanced and effective use of artificial intelligence to speed up enormously the workflow. I will not go too deep on how to use each feature, but let me know in the comments if you're interested in some tutorials about this excellent program. It is a very affordable program with different price options. It is possible to buy it as a one-off purchase or to pay a monthly or yearly fee. There is a price with all the extensions included and a very cheap one where each extension can be added individually. I have added a link to Skylum website with information and prices in the description. I like Luminar Neo so much that I decided to become an affiliate so I get a small commission on sales made using the link below. I should be getting a discount coupon for my community very soon. Again, I will add the link in the description as soon as I get it. Luminar Neo has some database management capabilities similar to the ones of Lightroom. For me, this is a crucial feature as I have dozens of hard drives full of photos and videos. For testing purposes, I have added two hard drives with about 50,000 images. Luminar has imported them in less than a couple of minutes and maintained the same structures of folder, so it is very easy now for me to navigate. Excellent! Let's start with this image. There is a host of presets available by clicking on this icon at the top in the middle, grouped under different collections. I don't tend to use presets much, but there are some really good ones and they can be useful for users who don't do any editing and need to post their images quickly on social media. By clicking on the icon Edit at the top, we access all the tools for color correction and color grading. In the window on the right, there are several categories of tools. The tab Essential contains all the traditional ones for color grading. From the raw file, the starting point is developed to set the overall exposure, shadows and highlights. I like to open the tab curves to check the values on a nice and wide histogram. There is a smart contrast slider that works particularly well. The next tab is to set the white and black points. At any time it is possible to hit J to toggle an overlay that shows the overexposed and underexposed areas. Curves works really well to fine-tune shadows, highlight and contrast and to adjust the interaction of red, green and blue. Further down there is a tab for the white balance to adjust the temperature, tint, saturation and vibrance. The two tabs for sharpness and noise reduction work quite well, but I will show you later on two more effective tools based on artificial intelligence. Optic is particularly useful with drones, as often we don't have a profile for the lens, and here we can get rid of distortion and vignetting in the raw files, while the JPEG ones are generally already corrected. Transform is to be used mainly with architectural features to correct the perspective. Further down there is an excellent erase tool to get rid of unwanted elements in the image while seamlessly integrating the area with the surroundings. In the tab color we can access the HSL panel to fine tune the hue, saturation or luminance for individual colors. The tab black and white modifies the luminance and saturation for each individual color. In the tab detail there are separate sliders for small, medium and large detail and for sharpening. In the next tab landscape there are three interesting tools. The haze is one that I use a lot to enhance the contrast and saturation of the sky. Golden Hour warms up the image starting from the area around the sun, while Foliage Enhancer shifts the hue only on the vegetation. Obviously, in real life, I would only use a few tools according to the scene in a subtle way. But the purpose here is not to achieve the perfect color grading, but rather to show how each tool works. Therefore, 
I make very bold changes to better show the effect of each tool. The tab Creative contains an array of tools for, uh, well, for creative effects. In real light, it is possible to modify the brightness of the elements in the foreground and of the one in the background. The slider shift moves the foreground closer or farther away. Atmosphere adds fog, mist or haze. Sunrays is an interesting tool for creative effect around the sun. It is possible to customize the appearance of rays in all possible ways. Another interesting tool is Stoning, to apply a color cast to the shadows and a different one to the highlights. I suggest playing around with the other tools of the creative category, some of them can yield interesting results in some situations. The tools grouped under the label Professional are very powerful, all sorts of effects can be achieved. Super Contrast is for setting separate amounts of contrast and control their balance for shadows, mid-tone and highlights. Color Harmony shapes the colors in all possible ways, including control of the balance of shadows, mid-tone and highlights. Dodge and Burn is a very welcome recent addition to slightly and precisely lighten or darken portion of the image to fine-tune the aspect of a scene. Another recent valuable addition is the classic clone stamp tool. In the top favorites there are two of the most interesting tools. Enhance, with the two sliders Accent and Sky Enhancer, tries to perform the entire color grading from a RAW file. Notice that if the sky is not detected in the scene, Sky Enhancer will not be available. This tool does an excellent job in many situations. All that is needed is to add the tool Super Contrast for an incredibly fast editing job. Then there is the famous Skies replacement tool, based on artificial intelligence. In Luminar Neo it works really well. After having chosen the sky in the different themes, plenty of adjustment can be made and finally the mask can be tweaked to better integrate it. In the category extensions there are three of my favorite tools, all based on AI. Noiseless works really well, getting rid of both luminance and chromatic noise without introducing any artifacts. Supercharp also does an excellent job by adding detail without any unwanted halos. There is a choice of three levels of strength and I suggest using the low value in most cases. Adding sharpness to an image is not everyone's cup of tea, it is often a matter of personal choice. It's not something to use on every occasion, only when the image calls for it. As an example, I find that photos taken with the Mini 3 or Mini 3 Pro in the normal 12 megapixel mode are excellent, but lack a bit of detail. Super Sharp is very useful to add detail in certain areas, maybe masking out other portions of the image. Magit Light is great fun to use and is excellent to add atmosphere to some images. When this tool is selected, it analyzes the scene and only gets ready to use if some lights are detected. The sun, the moon, street lamps, car lights and so on. It is then possible to apply star effects and glow of any shape or strength around the light source. There is an entire category of tools for portraits. I'll go very quickly on it as this is not something that is done very often with drones. There is a tab for bokeh with all the tools to the focus and control the aspect of the background for shallow depth of field. Then sliders to add light to the face and to slim it, both very useful. Apparently there is a liquefied tool planned to be released very soon. Then a tool for skin retouch. Some sliders for quickly losing some weight without going to the gym. And finally, a series of sliders for high key portraits. 
With most tools it is possible to apply masks to restrict the effect to only a portion of the image. Masks are very well organized, one of the strong points of Luminar Neo. In this case I want to apply contrast only to the elements on the ground, as I don't want to create artifacts in the sky. A quick easy way to select the elements on the ground is to use a linear gradient and place the central line at the edge of the sky. The red area shows where the adjustment will be applied. I can now use Super Contrast to adjust the contrast in the shadows, mid-tone and highlights. The edits apply only to the ground. By opening Mask Action it is possible to copy this mask in order to use it with other tools. Let's say that I want to add the haze to this image, but only to the sky. I don't want to affect the elements on the ground. I can use the mask that I created previously and invert it so that now it affects only the sky. If an effect has to be applied to the whole image, by going to Mask Actions and choosing Fill, the mask will cover the whole image. Besides Linear Gradient, there are other tools for masking, like the Classic Brush and the Radial Gradient. But the house specialty is the Artificial Intelligent Masking tool. By a simple click you will analyze the scene for a few seconds and create several masks for different portions of the images. Sky, water, mountain, architecture, floral, natural ground and so on. It is a very interesting tool for speeding up the workflow. But it is the only tool of Numenal Neo that still needs some improvements, although it is getting better and better. By clicking on Edit we access all the adjustments made to the image with the different tools. It is possible to hide each of them for a before and after comparison, to reset the value or to erase them. Like in Lightroom, the workflow is non-destructive. In other words, it is possible to return to the original file as it was before. In the Crop tab there is a composition button based on artificial intelligence. It tries to find the most interesting framing according to the rule of thirds, and the results are often very interesting. There is also an automatic button to straighten the horizon. Luminal is also a powerful multi-layer program, capable of separating a subject from the background to replace it with a different one, or to work with composite images. It would take too long to analyze here how long Luminar handles layers. It will be the subject of a specific video. There is an HDR merge option to blend several images taken in automatic exposure bracketing. It is a very useful feature to improve images shot in the direction of the sun, although Luminar Neo is capable of retrieving a great amount of information from the shadows even in single photos. So merging is not always needed. There is also the possibility of merging to HDR a single photo, which is unusual, and the results are often really good. For users who rely on a workflow based on Lightroom and Photoshop, Lumiere can be used as a plugin for these packages, adding plenty of the great functionalities we have seen so far. I've been having great fun testing and experimenting with Luminar Neo. I'm now willing to go out more and shoot photos. Post-processing with Luminar Neo is very enjoyable. It is a very intuitive and easy to learn program and the results I get are in many cases better than with any other editing program I tried in a fraction of the time. On most occasions the response of the program is fast. The only functionalities to take a bit of time are the one heavily based on AI, but this is understandable due to the number of calculations needed. But are there any limitations or flaws? Well, there are two feature missings, panorama stitching and time lapses. It would be nice to have them, but it's not a major issue, as there are plenty of other tools that can be used, even some good ones for free. The only tool that needs some more work is the auto mask, but the team at Skylum has shown the ability to constantly improve their program. Luminar Neo is now the program I wholly recommend to the vast majority of users, 
and it is also great fun to use. Click on this link to watch my video about photography with a Mini 3 Pro and don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.